So you know the game Minesweeper and you know that 8 is one of the rare numbers you can encounter in this edge of a seat, tension field adventure of a game. In this video we will dive even deeper into the world of grid placed number based oddities. Two sevens next to each other, boards with no zeros, boards that can be solved in one click and my personal favorite, eights in the shape of an eight. Hold on to your hats, let's start! Hello again and welcome to yet another video about Minesweeper. This is a follow-up video for the video What is the chance of getting 8 in Minesweeper I made a while ago. It is the most viewed video on my channel now. Wow, I did not see that coming and I would like to say thank you to everyone for checking out my videos, liking, commenting and everything. Speaking of commenting, the video had quite a few comments and I think it would be interesting to address the most popular questions. So this video will be a mishmash of Minesweeper related and probability related topics. But first, let me bring you up to speed with what's going on in just a few seconds. Minesweeper is a logical game where you need to determine a pattern of so-called mines based on numbers which show how many mines are around a particular cell. Playing Minesweeper is a relatively popular pastime among people who enjoy number-based games. Now what we are focusing on is not the game itself, but Minesweeper boards. Mines are placed on a board randomly and sometimes players encounter some rare or unusual patterns. It's not only cool to encounter them in a game, but also it's a good chance to practice some probability calculations. Alright, now everybody is on the same page, let's check out the most popular questions. By far, the most popular comment was comment that went something like Oh, yeah, how about 9? And to this very moment I'm not completely sure if people were trolling me, so let me answer this with all seriousness. Look at this slide. The picture shows the cells that would surround a typical Minesweeper board cell. I did number them so we can have a go at counting all the cells. If you do that you will find that there are only 8 cells, which, which makes the appearance of 9, for the lack of a better word, a little imp... It stands right behind me, isn't it? Anyway, I guess the serious answer to that is that it would be totally possible in a 3D Minesweeper and if you're asking, wait what, how does that work, I'd say it's exactly what it sounds like, Minesweeper but in three dimensions. It's quite mind-boggling. It made me think this is probably what people who don't play Minesweeper feel when they try to play Minesweeper. And 9 is only the beginning, the number of neighbors potentially can go as high as 26. Yes, but what about the 27? <laughs> anyway, the link is in the description. If you feel like 2 is the number of dimensions that's not challenging enough, give it a go. Now, let's address some critique concerning simulation results. Some of it is warranted and some isn't, so let's go through the most popular issues. There are three sizes of a Minesweeper board. Beginner for a quick and simple game, Expert for a real challenge and Intermediate for something in between. Question is, what is the size of a beginner board? Some would say 8x8, some 9x9. How come there is no agreement on such a simple question? Historically, Minesweeper beginner used a 8x8 board, which was changed to 9x9 by Microsoft around the year 2000, to make it simpler as their rationale went. It's been 9x9 since then. Many online Minesweepers adopted this new 9x9 size for their beginner games. And frankly, I totally see the point of this decision. One of the major factors in game difficulty is mine density, and with this new arrangement the difficulty curve smoothly goes up from 12 for the beginner, through 16 for intermediate, to 20 for expert. Nice clearly defined difficulty levels. Old 8x8 version of beginner had the same density as intermediate and this is a questionable choice for a difficulty curve design. However, this is how it historically was, so all Minesweeper community records are tracked for 8x8 boards. Also, Minesweeper clones have default 8x8 beginner boards and I too used 8x8 for my simulation. I mean, it's a bit unfortunate it's like that, but what else are we going to do? 
switch to 9x9 and reset all the records? Fun fact, this is exactly what they did with the sport javelin throw. They redesigned javelins in the 80s and basically went, all right, all records are now invalid, we start from scratch. So my point is, we probably don't want to do it with a minesweeper, do we? This one I enjoyed it a lot. A comment goes like this, why bother simulating all these if you can just calculate it by and then there's a suggestion of how it can be calculated, but often it's the wrong one. Here's my favorite. One in 6.4 squares are mines, true. So do 6.8 to the 8th power and you'll get one in 2.8 million, which is exactly the right answer, but reached with absolutely the wrong solution. And this is also a perfect illustration why simulation is a good idea. Look, people make mistakes. They do it all the time. I do it probably more often than an average programmer or probability theorist. My point is, if you arrive at the answer using just calculation or just simulation, how can you be sure you're right? The next set of issues is about how the field is actually being generated. Let me address some of the concerns. Does Minesweeper randomly place mines. Not the earliest version of Windows Minesweeper, no. At some point, competitive players noted that every now and then the game gave them super easy boards and those boards looked suspiciously similar. After long investigation, disassembling the code, reading memory, generating thousands of boards, etc., it was discovered that early Minesweeper versions indeed went through a cycle of boards and not a very long one, less than a hundred thousand. Modern Minesweepers, to the best of my knowledge, do use use randomly generated boards. What about the fact that you're using a pseudo random generator? True, I use Python's standard module, aptly named random, to generate random numbers and it even has a disclaimer saying it's not truly random, it's deterministic, so please don't use it for cryptography and so on. And as a pseudo random generator, it goes through the same cycle of random numbers, so if the cycle is small enough, we will get stuck with a fixed number of boards to look at, just like those early Minesweepers were. In the reality, the cycle of this algorithm, which is very conveniently listed on the documentation page, is 2 to the power of 19,937, which is very, very roughly 10 to the power of 6,500 or so. Unless I'm missing something, it looks like using a pseudo random generator should not have any tangible effect on the result. Another concern is the first click. You must probably know that despite what memes say, it's impossible to lose a Minesweeper game on your first click. How does this work? Turns out, if your first click is on a mine, Minesweeper will silently move the mine elsewhere. In the Windows versions, it would move it to the top left corner or to the first empty cell to the right of that. Now, does it affect the probability of 8? Well, yes. Think about it. Imagine you have a beginner board with an 8 in it. You have 8 divided by 64, one eighth chance to destroy this beauty by accidentally clicking on it. Which means your actual chance of seeing an 8 is 13% smaller. It's not 1 in 2.8 million, but abysmal 1 in 3.2 million. The difference is smaller for bigger boards, but it doesn't go away completely. It is also possible to go to the opposite direction and to finish an incomplete 8 with your first click, but chances of that are difficult to assess rather than really slim. Anyway, valid point, I'm going to acknowledge it, but respectfully ignore. Are there other limitations that Minesweeper has that can affect the board? As a matter of fact, there are. There's a special characteristic some Minesweeper versions calculate for every Minesweeper board, something that is called 3BV. 3BV is a minimal number of clicks required to solve this board. And, for example, if the board is too easy, it will not be accepted for a world leaderboard attempt. And, indeed, some versions of Minesweeper will not generate such a simple board. But, I would argue, it should not affect the case of seeing 8 much. For beginners, such a board requires at least 2 clicks to solve, so it should be allowed. More on the minimal clicks to solve different boards later in this video. Alright, concerns are out of the way, let's talk about various things my viewers suggested we can count probabilities for. Let's briefly replicate where we ended last time. Here are the numbers, here you go. By the way, here's also a chance to get 8 
on your very first click on the board, assuming you would click on non-border cells, that is, here are the chances. All right, this is what we already knew. Now let's figure out the probabilities of some new things. Given the possibility of eight, what do you think is the chance of the central cell being a mine two, resulting in this three by three mines block? Will it be less likely than eight or more likely? Think about it this way. To get an eight, all you need is a circle of mines and you don't really care where the remaining mines end up in the rest of the board. With three by three mines, however, one of those mines has to end up exactly in the middle of the circle. It brings the chance down a lot and the fewer mines you have left, the more difficult it will be. So for expert, getting three by three is four times less likely than eight. It's seven times less likely for intermediate and 27 times less likely for beginner. Interestingly, this three by three mine arrangement on the beginner board is actually the most improbable thing in Minesweeper I could still replicate with a simulation. One in 76 million. Another suggestion from the viewers, double seven. Such an arrangement is rarer than eight, rarer than three by three mines. Chances are 20,000 in expert, about 1 million in intermediate and whopping two and a half billion with a B in the beginner board. And I could only calculate those chances theoretically as simulating two billion boards was a little bit too much. Next we have another suggestion from a viewer and boy this one did surprise me. Let's look at the expert game for this one. So the chance of getting an 8 is about 1 in 1200, right? But what will be the chance of getting two 8s on one board? It becomes a bit difficult to calculate exactly, but it's reasonable to suggest that it should be close to 1200 squared, probably a bit less than that. I ran a simulation and here you go, it's about 1 in 1 1.2 million. Now the interesting, I would even say paradoxical part. If the chance of having two 8s on one board is about 1.2 million, what is the chance that those two 8s will be right next to each other and form an 8? Two 8s in the form of an 8. Can you guess what would be the chance of that? If someone asked me, I'd say maybe 50 times less likely, 100 times less likely, definitely something with two digits in it. I mean, you need to be pretty lucky to have those things right next to each other, right? Now, prepare for the correct answer. It's less than three. Just think about it. Every third board that has two eights will have those eights next to each other in the shape of an eight. My mind is blown. I have no idea why and how this happened, but I double checked the result with both probability calculation and simulation, and it's about the same. So it's probably correct. Amazing. Now let's move on. If so far we have looked at things that you can sometimes find on the board, the next series of Minesweeper oddities is about things that you sometimes don't find. Note, for the next few patterns we're talking only about beginner boards and the results are from the simulation only. I think I mentioned it briefly in the previous video, I found that the chance of getting two in the beginner is 99.98% or something, meaning you have a rare 0.02% chance of not meeting it. So let's explore this. I've conducted a more accurate simulation and indeed boards without twos are indeed rare. One in about 60,000, but it's not the rarest thing. No, 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 no. What if mines are so evenly covering the board, keeping a safe social distance of two cells from each other, but not further than that? What if they do that and there are no zeros on the board? Is it possible? Turns out, yeah, it is, in about one in 600,000 boards. Here are a few examples of such boards. Finally, and you thought it can't get any rarer, what is the chance of getting a board without ones? This was one of the comments to the previous video and now when I simulated it, it looks like it indeed could happen. And one in about 36 million boards are like that. Final thing to look at. 
What is the chance of winning a game of Minesweeper in exactly one click? This is something I became aware of accidentally because I got one of those. I even saved the screenshot. I honestly thought I found something as unique and wonderful as the coveted 8, but actually turns out such one click wins are rare, but not too rare. So how rare those one click games really are? To answer this, let me introduce you again to something called 3BV. 3BV is a property of a Minesweeper board, and it's the minimal number of clicks needed to solve the board. Look, boards are random, so some can naturally be harder or easier than others. 3BV tries to measure and sometimes limit that amount of luck. For example, for the world record, there's a limit of 3BV. If you can think about it this way, the bigger area you can potentially open with zeros, the smaller is 3BV. With 3BV equals one, you can open the whole board with exactly one click. Now, let's take some measurements. Here they are. And turns out one in about 200,000 beginner games are like that. So I did get quite lucky that one time I got it. I didn't manage to find any one click intermediate or expert games. They are of course possible, but extremely improbable. The lowest I could find was 18 for intermediate and 70 for expert. All right, I guess this is it for the rarer things you can find on a Minesweeper board. And if you are still watching this, just think about it. It's a video about numbers patterns in a very abstract computer game. And it's probably 15 or 20 minutes long and you're still here. On a scale of 1 to 10, I will rate your nerdiness 8. All right, thank you for sticking around. I hope to have something even more action-packed for the next video. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.